yeah man like podcasting is something that uh is becoming popular in the last like maybe five to ten years mm-hmm. but it's such a great thing because you get you get to uh experience how you be like how it would be to chill with uh, some other person that you don't know at all uh-huh. but you can kind of relate to that person mm. because we are all human we all have the same emotions we have different problems but we are essentially the same you know and it's kind of like the way society is going it's like we're becoming more detached from actual normal conversations right so like we want to watch someone have like a normal conversation on like mm-hmm. vi- on a video or something because people don't go out and conversate as much they just sit on the phones mm-hmm. so True. it's like they can get close to that connection by watching someone else have that connection not saying we're like expert conversationists at here, all yeah like, we're just but. talking shit right now <laughs> but uh, that's one of the great things about it mm-hmm. and uh, it's I think it's becoming a viral thing like everybody this podcast starting left and right as people people that are not even famous or also scientists or sp- sports stars or whoever can have a fucking podcast is the easiest thing mm-hmm. it's just telling me today it's like it's like 60 uh, bucks for the setup. Like you need a phone and a mic and you're ready to go basically, mm. right? So it's or even you don't even need those things. Like there's a lot of people that do really well, but uh-huh. just on like an iPhone or something. Mm-hmm. Like especially YouTubers, if you've got like good charismatic personality, then oh. you can just record um, just true. record a video on anything, potato if you want. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man, this is a... Uh, this thing is changing. I think the whole uh, technology acceleration uh, process is a real thing. Like this whole singularity idea is a real thing. It's happening as we, you know, live year by year. Uh-huh. It's changing like crazy. Like, I think in ten to twenty years, we cannot, we won't be able to imagine what's coming. I think we can have like a, a podcast of a hologram mm. of someone. Yeah, so you won't be able soon. to. You won't be able to tell the difference. Like. Yeah, have you seen the deep fakes they do online? No. So they get people like uh, they had a, have a lot of um, hours that are stored up on on the, on the web on the cloud, mm-hmm. like uh, presence of state or radio host Joe Rogan, so or any kind of personality. And because the the AI system has so much information, so much uh, recorded video, you can tweak the video and make him appear to say anything you want ah shit that's called deep fake and it's something that's mm. invented like last year or something mm. and it's still in, in its infancy but it, it looks like in five to ten years time uh we we won't be able to discern whether it's, it's a real fucking video of whoever put in the say it's gonna nuke us or is it just that's, i guess it's always been the case with like acting mm-hmm. like if you're a good actor you can't like distinguish like who's who's lying who's not like mm. what's real and what's not not what what's not real you know mm-hmm. but um then we can go into like conspiracy theories and shit to do with uh, the moon landings and all this like fake media sort of stuff i'm not sure what do you think do we land did we land on the moon you're not like a flat earther I'm hundred percent convinced we land on the moon. I'm hundred percent convinced the Earth is very round. Uh-huh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anybody that disagrees. Well, that's the end of that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, it will be a long conversation, but it's no no chance, no way that it's not that. Do you think there's like something slightly ajar, or do you think like everything that the American government told us was like? No, of course they don't tell us the whole truth, Mm -hmm. but um, these uh, mainstream fucking conspiracy theories are just laughable. (laughs) They they make no sense, whatever you look at them. Mm. Like, if you start, like, uh, asking yourself questions after question, like, you know, uh, how many need to be, how many people need to be inside the conspiracy, you know? Mm. And it didn't leak, and nobody fucking talked about it, you know? It's very hard to believe, man, Mm -hmm. very hard, like... I think, like, occasionally things go ajar, right, Mm. but... I'm not sure like the governments are plotting hardly against us as much as people think, but I don't think the vested exactly. interest is actually in like a, in creating a stronger society full of more meditative, loving people connecting. Like, of course, no. There's like, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's true. Like, but I'm not as against the government as I was because mm-hmm. it's like we're right here in the city like all these things have been built by 
yeah, people we might not have elected, but that's the system. You've got to like kind of go with it, go with it a little, because what else are you going to do? Like, that's the thing. I see more like a, it's a machine that it's it's running us. So we are we like to think we are individuals with our own free will and our own like real lives going on. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the bigger picture, if you look at Earth, if you look at weather patterns, if you look at uh, fucking how you see the the lights from space, you know, you can look at it from another angle a different perspective and i think that uh there's nothing wrong yet it's just happening mm -hmm. so i see like uh, how um how the the trees are being cut down and technology is racing and there's more concrete and there's less forest every year i see that more like uh it's a slow weather storm a slow uh, cloud that's moving in this planet mm -hmm. and there's nobody to blame it's just the way things are that's of course a, exactly it's, that that's the point right there no one's like really to blame exactly um, there's no conspiracy there's no tank top hats you know like mm -hmm. pulling all the strings the puppeteers mm -hmm. that's bullshit because nature they can't control nature at the end of the day mm -hmm. and i feel like we the, this is like a process of nature everything we're is not separate from nature right but we we, st we just somehow believe we're separate from nature like yeah. uh that's how alan was <laughs> put it right exactly like we're living mm -hmm. on earth at peoples just like a, a trees can make apples it turns out this piece of rock floating in space uh, makes people uh-huh just because of the bacteria and the millions and millions of years of evolution and first uh, you know we were shit of fish swimming then reptilians came out the monkeys and here we are questioning right. everything who like what consciousness was inhabiting like these fish at that time was that not us you know what who I mean? knows that comes to the question that was that not what? our experience as well like what are we just humans or are we everything that's perceiving reality yeah, maybe we are just uh, humans having a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. We are spir spiritual beings having a human experience. Oh my God, we're spiritual beings Sp having a spiritual <laughs> experience. Yeah. <laughs> the cliches, man. <laughs> uh huh. So, who knows? That comes down to the question what is consciousness? And that's a question you cannot answer. That's philosophy, and you can get different takes on it, but nobody has the answer for that. Mm. We're still figuring out as we speak. So who knows? That's the beautiful. That's beautiful as well mm -hmm. because uh, um, it's like uh, um, what's the word? What's this phrase uh, talking as well? They said uh, life is not a problem to be solved; it's mm -hmm. a mystery to be enjoyed, to be experienced. To be experienced. Yeah. No one wants to. Um, no one really wants to intellectualize like the moment of orgasm and like talk about it mm -hmm. like you must experience it mm -hmm. that's the that's where the joy is like right. not about talking about it like yes it's nice to share stories but only stories can be shared when you've had an authentic experience, oh, experience yes. if it's not your authentic experience you can't share that story with yeah, enough exactly. juice to it yeah 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 and um, when it is your experience authentically, like someone can be drawn into mm -hmm. the emotions you felt at that time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is where wisdom lies, right? Like True. wisdom comes from experience. From reality. Um, knowledge, uh, knowledge and wisdom come from, I was just reading this book before it said, knowledge and wisdom like, are things that change mm -hmm. and you can only learn from like that change, mm -hmm. but um, like kind of intellectual, um, education is something mm -hmm. that doesn't really change so much mm -hmm. so it stays more stagnant and um yeah so what are your thoughts on that what are so, your thoughts on that bad boy i agree 100 percent. I, I heard it described a different way that um uh, they put it this way that uh you can experience it's called qualia qualia is uh, something that's studied in scientific circles like a term they came up with for just raw experience of your senses. So for instance, uh, the color red is qualia. It's something uh, tangible. Mm -hmm. But what's funny about the whole science uh, system that we figured out, the whole scientific method, uh, we are not sure when I say uh, this is red or this is red and this is black, there's ultimately there's not a uh an ultimate truth to say like you are having the same experience that i have mm -hmm. we're just assuming that mm. so it's a, a core assumption that we have Did that the, the core assumption is that there's a an objective reality mm. and that's just assumed that's the mm. you know that's where the whole scientific method uh, lies 
in uh-huh a plant so well, it can't, the the sub would it be subjective reality that only i can experience myself can't really be studied mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like it can only be studied from going internal exactly but if, if you find answers which which um you are just 100 percent on like for your own scientific like investigation into mm-hmm. into yourself but what can you be 100 percent sure about nothing you can exactly. be a hundred percent sure about nothing but also you can be a hundred percent sure about there's no satanity it doesn't exist it can't be intellectualized it can only be experienced it like you could exist. be a hundred percent sure about something if you're a hundred percent absorbed into it but mm-hmm. when the moment you try to like explain that situation mm-hmm. to someone or or re- replicate it anyway like and then it just gets further that, away that's from one the of the deepest uh, philosophical questions ever is like what is true and uh, the whole career of René Descartes, you know, the philosopher of the 16th or 17th I know century. literally nothing about, uh, the only philosopher I know is like Alan Watts, that's All right. about it. All right. I've not it's like checked enough. out, but I've learned about philosophy through other teachers like Osho and You um, should, there's some books like that, that just sum up the whole uh, history of philosophy and they're quite like uh, eye-opening. Because uh-huh. they're very deep thinkers of the time and you can sum up their ideas in two or three paragraphs, like the main thing, you know and yeah he, this guy came up with something called the cogito so his famous quote is i think therefore i am so okay. the, the only thing he, ca- he could be sure about uh is that uh i exist because i'm thinking so that was uh his takeaway and that's uh, from there you can derive all the other truths but i think thoughts so therefore i exist mm-hmm. what about the moments where you don't have thoughts I'm not sure. I'm not here to answer. <laughs> I'm not representing. I don't know, but I I disagree. By the way, I think there's a the assumption within that phrase is that I think for I am the the assumption is the I that's assumed uh, in the first place. So I don't think the I don't think there's an I. Uh, I don't believe there's an I running us. I believe the ultimate truth is. Um, uh, th- this eye that we all think we, be, uh, we are that mm-hmm. you open your hand you look across you do whatever you think you are doing you're not doing it mm. you're just uh, experiencing as if you were a separate entity but it's an illusion of your mind mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's no doer like, there's no, no doer for things to be done to correct that's true like doesn't matter like whatever you believe whatever however you think that's apparently like uh, as far as I understand, that's uh, reality. The, we live with a, an illusion in your brains, and um, you can describe it as a parasite as well. Mm-hmm. And that parasite would be the I parasite, the I idea. Mm-hmm. So because really, there's just like equipment here. It's not my equipment. There's no me. There's no. That's another big one. <laughs> I figured when I was like twelve or thirteen. Like if you buy a house, right? Mm-hmm. What does that ma- uh, make that house yours? Or a car or something? Mm. Something, anything at all. What does it make it yours? Some paperwork? Mm. Just because a lot of people decided that now, okay, society accepts that that is yours. But is that is a, a human made construct. It's not reality. It doesn't care about you, yours, or mine. It's just particles fucking moving around. Or another one that I thought about how can you tell, like, if you go down with a really big microscope and you look at your finger and your nails? Where does your nail finish? Where do you finish? Or where does the reality begins? Mm. The, the rest? Mm. Is there a li- There's no line. There are no lines. It's all together. Togetherness. So our minds as uh, apes, right? They've been developed to hunt and to um, feed animals and protect our families, or our tribes. And because of that, I believe, uh, this, uh, the mind developed this way to separate uh stuff into concepts into okay good bad you know hunt uh food or just fucking flee mm. go uh, whatever is a big bear you have to run it's because it's the 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 attachment to that fabrication of the self or the personality or the i like mm-hmm. the the perception that that thing can end is what like brings the concept of good and bad and like survival and the need to survive or the, the not need to survive it's it's all the i i-ness mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which yeah. which creates all those problems in a way mm-hmm. when there's no i-ness there's nothing that needs to survive it's just always there you are everything 
at its highest peak in a way. It's it's, a, it's, a, it's something that makes a lot of sense as well because it's not that it's it's completely useless. Like if you want to um, just go through life through society, you have to believe you exist. You have to mm. believe you have all these things and you have a job and you can't but, not sign forms and just say there is no me. You know, like exactly mm. uh, that's reality. That's the way it is. And people we have forgotten that. And we, it's the same that happened with money. People like. Uh, most people like uh, they they worship money like it's the new religion it's the new god it's the new is it but what is god what is uh money is a symbol for something but that symbol is mm. not real people mm. mistake a symbol for reality mm -hmm. so in that way as alan watts again put it uh um don't confuse money with wealth it's not the same thing because mm -hmm. you can be super super like i'll have a lot of paper but you can be super super poor in a way as well like right now if we was locked in this flat like the only things of wealth would be in the fridge the water supply like mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit of a bit of the herb you know but the money would just be like useless in a way mm. um i was having this thought the other day whilst i was making some food like i was thinking like maybe six months one year ago i wanted to like be in a good place where i was traveling where i had enough money where i was eating healthy food mm. where i was meditating where i was meeting girls where mm. my, my life was exciting and then i just realized that yeah, that's that's right here right now mm -hmm. now what like what's next <laughs> exactly do you know what i mean yeah. like it was a mad moment because it, it's like you, you're living out this idea of the dream in your head but the all the all there is is right here right now and it made me kind of grateful but then also i appreciated like being so wealthy but not in terms of like having loads of money but just having the life that i, I planned up maybe six months one year ago mm -hmm. and that also comes down to gratefulness and it's a very important uh, habit and very important uh, thought pattern that you should exercise uh -huh. daily as much as possible because that's what it is really it's uh, gratefulness acceptance 100 yes. mm -hmm. and uh yeah the, all those uh ideas and thoughts there they are detached from the society that we live in and we forget uh who we are in the first place uh -huh. and we, we keep uh, there's a, a beautiful uh, book from uh, osho it's called intimacy mm -hmm. and it begins uh with uh, something like uh, there's this story where um, we keep like there's always this feeling of lack that we need something that we need to get somewhere we need to you know um, get that promotion get that lifestyle that you want get that girl maybe get promotion whatever uh, X girl. just put an X and say whatever and, and you keep higher your in the life higher in the hip-hop charts yes exactly more you, girls the harem <laughs> two you, harems yeah <laughs> <laughs> whatever wherever you want but uh, it's always the same thought pattern that's happening in your mind and it's running you you think you're you're you want to do all those things but it's, there's no you in that it's just a, a shitty fucking low energy thought pattern that's running the, the human being much like the matrix so um i was gonna say what like why do we th why do we choose to believe in this character like this fake character that we know it doesn't exist what are the benefits of keeping like a, a consecutive or not consecutive keeping um in the society playing this role of this person mm -hmm. building character building storytelling mm -hmm. acting this part you know mm -hmm. like why why do we keep that like what's the drive the well, first off i don't think it's a choice it's something natural that's happening and the nuttiest and most accurate idea I found, like reading a lot of books and researching and just being curious, really, uh, is this idea that uh, this I, this thing, is very, very, very real. And it's a real life form. It's non-physical, but it's life. So for life, um, for life to happen, according to the evolutionary psychologist, to Darwin, like the definition we have at least for evolution is you need a uh, mutation mm -hmm. so you need to 
be able to um, change. For, sorry, yeah. it starts with self replication. Mm -hmm. So you know when you have one cell and it divides into two, then into four, then into eight. That's the the whole concept of the egg. Um, so you need to uh, reproduce yourself. Then you need to mutate because if you always if you keep doing exact copies of yourself, uh, th there will be no variation. It will be all the same atom. It will be all just oneness or whatever. There will be no duality at all. So and and always you can never make uh, one copy of the other exactly mm. perfect the same doesn't exist. Mm. There is no there is no constant. That's a great thing to to ponder, isn't it? Like mm -hmm. every th every single thing is um, impermanent in the universe. Everything, even even our bodies look kind of solid, but it's all like a conglomeration of different organisms working together in like this kind of flow, mm -hmm. which is always dropping skin flakes and changing completely. Correct. There's nothing that like stays the same. Every seven years, is it that you, all your fucking cells and atoms in your body change? Exactly. So what remains? So what, what, what makes it? What think? remains? Exactly. Yeah. That's the question. Exactly. It's a uh -huh. good question. What does remain? Reality. Reality is the only. Always like to all these philosophical questions that you ponder. There's one great answer, and it's right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Reality. The the, the th qualia. What you can experience now. Mm -hmm. But that that um, that thing that can only be expressed in kind of silence in a way, just experience that can't be like explained to another person. It can only be understood through silence and experiencing si it. Silence or another great one is breathing. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe there's so many uh, breathing. This breathing is involving all religions and in many of the new like uh, you know Wim Hof and how did you how breathing. did you like find out about Wim Hof? YouTube Vice, like everybody uh -huh. else, of course. <laughs> I never met him on the street. <laughs> but um, breathing, yeah, is, is something it can only be done right here and right now. And if you just follow your breath with, uh, with awareness, everything that's not here and now just dissolves because it's not real. Again. It is simple. Like, it's to, to remain like in a state of kind of equanimity, focusing on your breathing, like, just brings you straight to that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I believe as well that uh, most of the or all of art forms, in some kind of way, they express that, like uh, music. Like the highest expression of music for me, is jamming to a beat and just be able to create beautiful uh, sound patterns. Uh, but they're created in the spur of the moment, mm -hmm. or they were created and then you recreate them later and mm -hmm. you, you make a hit. But the idea of the, the whole idea is that it just that happen mm -hmm. there's a beautiful there's, there's a well uh, there's as well a level of emotion of, of human emotions that's play that you express love or fear or um, uh, being heartbroken or whatever well it's a good thing to think about that it, it may seem there's consecutive things that like that one event is like a consecutive thing but every single moment it's brand new like every mm -hmm. moment is like an adventure mm -hmm. So if you kind of see the world as like more of a fluctuation that's always changing, it doesn't like grab you down. Like stagnation creates depression, and like you can't move forward, you can't adapt, you can't change. It's, go it's going yeah. against like the laws of like um, the world, you know, like the laws of nature, the laws of uh, physics. Yeah, exactly. You're you're too deep deep in the lie of the eye. Mm -hmm. your, your head is too far up your own eyes you don't you cannot <laughs> tell what's reality from not mm -hmm. you are completely lost it with reality. and that's unfortunately uh, you you can see in many ways like maybe that's you know like uh, this uh, eye virus created arguably this technology so probably as i say technology is the next big uh, life form mm -hmm. that's gonna take over mm -hmm. i'm i'm excited for it yes. i'm excited to see where it goes man like i don't know what to be but <laughs> it's crazy to think about it i know that uh-huh mm -hmm yeah like just imagine like a hologram just like sat there of yourself just looking at it like About we never get to observe ourselves like in the way that someone observes us mm -hmm. did you ever watch that film the wake is it the waking life the yes is it waking life by richard linklater 
I'm not sure who it's by, but it's, it's like a kind of a cartoon and like different that's people exactly have different the movie. perceptions. Yes, and I'm they a big see... fan of that movie. Big fan, long time ago. Uh -huh. I've watched it a couple of times and like I still, it's still like I can never get it at all. Like I'm just like so spaced out. Like, but it's I need to watch it fuck. again. Yeah. Like, so basically, in this movie, uh, this guy wakes up and uh, in kind of like a blurry state and he keeps meeting people very famous like Socrates or maybe like uh, movie stars and it's very very random like uh, he uh, some taxi driver picks him up off the street with a boat mm -hmm. and he's just riding down the, the streets and suddenly on the back seat there's fucking I don't know Michael Jordan and he's talking some knowledge about the basketball game or whatever and as the movie goes on the guys realize like hold on I might be it might be just a dream like is this reality or is it a dream and uh, the brilliant point about it is that uh, through the whole movie through, through this whole movie he keeps meeting like uh, great personalities that have different kinds of views on what is real what is not what does uh, being alive what does existence mean so yeah I fucking love that movie man I'm a great fan I like how it it's like it's made or filmed in a way you know as well um because it's it's kind of like a cartoon but each each person that comes on the screen like the perception of the guy changes mm -hmm. like one moment he'll like see like kind of swirling patterns and dots and then the next minute it'll be like just a big spacious mm -hmm. thing and super super creative idea because he mm -hmm. uh, they expose so many fucking avenues so many ideas and it's just beautifully beautifully made you know the same uh, director had uh, has two or three movies now uh, about a love story mm -hmm. it's, uh, the first one is before sunrise right you heard about it no okay so before sunrise and then that's the first movie and then so two strangers meet in a in a in a train in in the middle of fucking prague or somewhere in czech republic and they just fall in love and they talk about life and they apply that sense of meaning to life of of love of soulmates and then the second movie is 20 years later when they because they had like a one night affair and it was magical and then they separated and the woman is married and the guy is famous he's also had many books about the first story and uh, yeah that director that guy richard link later anything you can watch about him he's a genius super genius guy uh -huh. does he do like actors as well or is it all like cartoons he does animations? Actors as well yes yeah. Sick. that movie is before sunrise you need to check out a guy called kim ki duk okay he's like a korean director all right shit and um like his films are he's won lots like lots of awards at like different festivals his films are like all silence silence is the main sort of like thing um my favorite film by him is called summer spring autumn winter and spring <laughs> Um. <laughs> what's it called again <laughs> summer spring autumn <laughs> summer spring autumn winter and, and spring, spring again <laughs> <laughs> but in korean it's probably just like <laughs> 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 it's just something really short <laughs> got to, got to, can we, we can we again <laughs> anyway um if there's any korean people watching like please like translate it for us and leave a like comment um so yeah, like, it's about like a monk who, um, he's living on like a, a floating monastery in the middle of a lake. So what? imagine like a boat, like a just decking, like uh -huh. wood, and then like a kind of a shed on top of it. And it's quite a big thing. There's like a, a fish pond, kind mm. of a small fish pond, the Buddha and like mm. a, um, a shrine and shit. And um, somebody like brings an orphan to him. He raises this orphan often kind of like has this crazy adventure just like wandering alone like on he finds like um a fish mm. and he ties like a stone to the fish okay and then he finds like um spoiler alert <laughs> he finds like um a snake and he finds a frog and he ties like a stone to them and he's just like being a naughty little kid and uh then the master like realizes why is the spoiler that he finds the snake and uh <laughs> and so they, what was the point of the movie it's, what is he trying to do it's uh it's um it's a big event in the movie okay so you don't so, want to ruin so it then the, the next day like the when the kids are asleep the master ties like a stone to the kid mm. and then the kid wakes up and he's like oh the stone's so heavy and the master says like did, did you not tie the same thing to a 
a snake mm. to a frog to a fish because the master was watching him and um he says like go and untie all the animals but if one of them is dead it will be a stone that you carry in your heart forever oh. it's like re- the most deepest shit like he goes and finds Sorry. these animals and they're like some of them are alive some of them are dead and then the che- the season changes and it's summer and then a pretty girl comes in because like she's got some like mental problems she needs like fixing and like th- shit's kind of going down Whoa. some crazy shit goes down you probably guess what like Mm-mm-mm. monk hot Mm-mm. girl there you go bestseller season changes again <laughs> hot girl bestseller <laughs> i'm not like giving too much away here but season changes again mm. and like he comes back it's it's autumn and um he like he has some crazy argument with his girlfriend and like shit's like hit the fan because he's gone into like the society and he's lost the way like he's what lost all these teachings and um and then he he gets arrested and he the the um the monk paints like this sutra this buddhist like scripture mm. all on the deck mm. and he s- gives him a knife and he's like carve it out with all your anger like so he carves oh, out like all these deep. Chinese characters and then falls Korean. asleep. So Korean, Korean, <laughs> Korean characters. Sorry, Chinese. But people. it could be Chinese because like sometimes people study Chinese and like take the the text from Chinese. No idea. And then no he way. comes back after prison after all these years and he's now like really old. Mm. And the other monk like kind of does this ceremony and like dies and shit and then the whole like circle is flipped around again and the the orphan comes back. He realizes like what he's done and the mistakes he's made and he starts training and meditating and then someone else brings an, another orphan in and then like the whole cycle, cycle repeats. Karma. Yeah. There you go. But the way it's filmed, there's only like two pages of dialogue in the whole, fi- the whole film. Mm. It's just, just silence. A lot of it's silence and very deep like... Um, and then I want to watch it. what's the name again it's called Summer Spring Autumn Six. and Winter it's free on YouTube as well sick uh, Summer Spring but I realised recently like whilst looking up the director that the guy he filmed the film without a script so uh, he did this whole <laughs> this is a freestyle movie yeah yeah that's the sick concept he's, he's he's like he's a very deep meditator sort of guy and um he just did the whole thing like kind of freestyle but it's incredible really good some great reviews so one but that that guy's my favorite director wow and it's quite crazy that, that you know so how do you get to know about this movie because that movie you're not very korean mm-hmm. my friend um actually this is a really good story so you're actually um so you know, the other night I was telling you about the woman that I met, like in a Buddhist in a monastery. monastery. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. I met this woman in a monastery when I had just come out of hospital when I was around eighteen, and um, she taught me like many things. She wrote poetry for me. Had this beautiful like romance with her in like a Buddhist temple. Then we went camping, and um, she like introduced me to like tantra and a couple of other concepts. Do you know about Osho uh, back then? About because Osho no. is one of your main no. inspirations. I didn't no. know about Osho until like, quite recently. Okay, okay. Um, Interesting. So yeah, like, but I remember one day we went, um, we went out to like the beach. Mm-hmm. Like this is very strange because in my memory, I can't remember if I was rowing about or if I wasn't, but maybe it's just something she said. Um, but she said she, I reminded her of the monk in this film. Oh wow! So like, no I just remembered that, and I can't remember how I actually came across across this film. Maybe I was searching for like Zen films online or something, and you saw it, watched it. But then I remembered, oh shit, that's the same film that she told me about, like all that time ago. That might be Google just spying on you, by the way. There might be a fucking <laughs> placed ad for you, <laughs> and here we are. But that was that was back in the day when they were discreet about that shit. Doesn't matter. No, it's just like you don't know. Face. You don't know. We don't. We will never know. Uh huh. Maybe it was all plotted <laughs> by the master <laughs> architect. Yes. Sick, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, by the way, Asi- Asian cinema, just anything Asian really, but Asian cinema is really, really good. There's some really, really good directors, which I cannot pronounce. 
but there are some sick movies, especially in Hong Kong. The the action cinema, you know, you have movies like blockbusters that are, come out here. They're copies from there, and they're way better in the original form. Mm-hmm. Way better. And they have, like, English subtitles. Even though everything's in Chinese or Cantonese or whatever, you can understand the whole thing. So I, I would really recommend to check out. There's one movie called The Core. But I forget the, the director's name. Anyway, sick fucking... Do you know um, Battle Royale? No. Oh. Uh, I, I know, like, The Hunger Games and shit. Hunger Games, yeah, but that does not. So Hunger Games is a spin-off of Battle Royale. Okay. Do you know that? So Battle Royale is a concept of uh, they take the whole uh, class of uh, of high school students, and for some random fucking One reason. Sec. I'm just yes. gonna check the cameras. Yeah. Are we recording? Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good conversation. I have nothing else good to talk about. <laughs> so, I'm running out of topics. <laughs> you can never run out of topics. Sh- sh- should we like... It just flows. I will say, okay, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> should we start now? Like, for real? <laughs> we warmed up already. Should we just keep going? Just keep going, man. Just keep all going. Right. We can use it all. It's beautiful. It's been smooth so far. Yes. But you can never run out of things to say. That's true. That's true. If you lower the standard of uh-huh. what's acceptable. You can just just, just ask any numbers. question. Like yeah. one question leads to the next question, another mm-hmm. question. True mm. that. True that. Hundred percent. So yeah, man, it's interesting, and I appreciate that you have uh, the oh. power of will to make all this happen. Because it's something that I thought about before, but I would never, you know, like on my to-do list kind of thing like uh, i have so many stuff to do that i i would like to do it but i have no time mm. but why not because this actually, is like all my time man this is like my right, work you know creating stuff yeah man. that's beautiful man Th- that's a life with uh, meaning with purpose it's something worth living for i think in my opinion it does make me happy like anything it, that's creative yeah literally anything that's if you're great. Cre- creating something the, the 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 word create creation um you're being proactive in my opinion uh if you're not creating anything you're reacting mm-hmm. if you're living uh your life through reaction you're living uh, on fear something is running you again I namely mean, that i idea can you like can but, you uh, just just have sorry, creative people though like so just to finish up my point like if you are creating something it means that you're connecting with something whether it's it's completely new original idea or not original thought original uh, stuff happening that's up to debate but what's true is that what's truth is that uh, if you create something you're not uh, uh, thinking too much about your pit, uh, petty little self you're just uh, connecting with something higher than mm-hmm. your only mm-hmm. me problems you know so I do that because it's beautiful. I, whether it's a podcast or a or a piece of uh, of art, of painting, or graffiti, tattoo, or a music piece, or anything, or a book, or just your, or just your, your ideas in a book, or your fantasy story, mm-hmm. that's a, a worthwhile uh, thought, energy, uh, vibration to be shared. That's like the human I went spirit. Really, <laughs> really hippie there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the human spirit, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's. If you could ask like anyone what true superpower you want, like, it's always something like creative, you know? Like mm-hmm. it's always something that gives you power over the world. Invisible, like, I'm thinking of top, like invisible, uh, what, superpower? Or there's two, this the cl- Flying. Classic. Flying or invisible, yeah, we'd rather fly or be invisible. That's a classic one. But then if you start thinking, yeah, would you rather, I don't know, Paint money while you shit, or <laughs> would you rather whatever? So yeah, one, one superpower, superpower I like to have. Uh, good question. This this might answer it. Like, what what superpower would you like to have? Uh, Tell me, it? which superpower would you like to have? Me? Yeah. To just be like completely free of all like troubles of the mind to so just be completely like but how do you know that your mind has a trouble <laughs> oh <laughs> you can go deep with this you know what i mean 
to experience just experience reality without any hang ups to just flow and be cool in every situation fair enough to create anything I want how do you know you're creating something hey you can keep going on the the, the trail of whys and hows it goes so deep there's there's one point where you realize uh, I don't know shit uh, <laughs> basically like I don't fucking know so, that's the only thing there is to know is nothing mm -hmm. true that existence but that's the whole master and disciple debate it's like the, the master the, the disciple goes to the master he's like I need help he's like why do you need help <laughs> he's like because I'm because I'm what? struggling like life is struggling mm. who are like who are you I don't know find out you are a virus in your own mind you are not yourself that's my opinion that's my question my answer <laughs> to that question and there's uh, another book but if, if somebody's watching this for some reason <laughs> if you can get something out of this podcast <laughs> the main thing i figured out in my life is like the as far as philosophical meditation who the fuck are you questions um kiaran healy the uncovering that's the book kiaran healy the uncovering uh you can get it on amazon and uh, he uh, yeah he's uh, in my opinion the most prolific philosopher uh, that's existing nowadays why because he's just nailing down this whole fucking problem in a very specific way mm -hmm. and he's scientific about it but aside from all this on top of that even if it's all bullshit the way he writes he's a fucking genius like uh, the way he expresses ideas and uh, he's knowledgeable about everything it's like a um he he uh, grabs stuff he's not a specialist he's a generalist from all walks of life of experience of mm. science politics religions and he blends topics so kind of like kind of like uh nicolas taleb from he wrote the anti-fragile and the black swan uh he's the same kind of guy but this guy just writes about uh the deepest problems of human existence and he acknowledges all the previous work that's done by you know all the philosophers from the western to the eastern from Lao Tzu and fucking Buddha to uh, Immanuel Kant, Descartes you name it he, he's he got that perspective down and he's experienced enlightenment and he shares his beliefs so it's like on the on the very very edge PhD level of knowledge of uh, self like do if you, you want to describe it scientifically because then do you, do you not think like when you get to the enlightenment stage you can just talk like constantly about reality like without 100 percent yeah. but, but that's more like a, as well it's like a performance piece you can choose to do that yeah. but you you might you might you can you might uh experience that vibration uh the level of uh consciousness probably over 800 if you go to energy scale of the sky so anyway so if you are <laughs> if you are fucking uh, experiencing that uh, level of consciousness and you want to talk about what's going on and to explain people and lower down the levels you, you can choose to do that but you can choose as well to uh, explain them through the intellect through science that's how mo most of this uh, or uh, advances are made right I feel like when you've achieved that like I don't know if the right word is duality or non-duality, but you've achieved that state like of being separate from the world, then you kind of understand like what, what language to speak, you mm -hmm. know? Whether the language is silence or the language is science or like you could speak mm -hmm. to the person at their level like mm -hmm. and help them understand like greater things like through sure. that person. Yes. Yes. Agreed. And that like uh, most of um, what I'm talking about it comes down to that book from Kieran Healy and then energy levels or power versus force is a whole energy energetic scale of human emotions mm. there's a fascinating concept that I discovered like this uh, this year and I was blown away like uh, there's always this expression uh, the map is not the territory so you cannot never know the ultimate uh, truth of anything because you are experiencing through a, a subset like you have to be god to to know everything so uh but you can use it as a very valid map of how to operate 
in, on your life. So uh, the main book is called Power vs. Force by David Carr Hawkins. And it's a sick, sick idea because whatever, however your life is going at this moment, uh, you should know that it's being mapped out by people before you, originally the Vedas in India. Mm. And uh, there, you think this is all there is, that this fear, this, uh, this reality that you experience, this pain is also real, it's all an illusion. You can choose to just let go of it and blow up the energy scale naturally. Like you don't have to do anything literally, just have to let it come to you. So like this book's like really changed, like how's it, has it changed like your perception? 100%, 100%. Like it, it, uh, it broadened my, my horizons of what I'm aware of. So whenever, um, like just like uh, the Zhang Yan shadow self, right? That, that's, which are topics I know, that- I know a little about like um, modern uh, psychology concepts. I know like little things about different psychologists though, like that apparently Jung was like a pussy old because someone wanted to like take him to a, mm -hmm. an enlightened master in India and like he wouldn't go, you know, something, something afraid about him, like. Yeah, I think that it's funny how <laughs> um, this whole YouTube algorithms and Google algorithms uh, work. Shh, don't, we're trying to monetize this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Are we? Oh, I was not. <laughs> Like you can pay me five bucks afterwards if you want. I'll, I'll monitor it. For the effort. If we go viral, half, half, we spend in Thailand. Respect, you said it. On a beach. He oh. said it. I'll take half. It's on, it's on tape. <laughs> so, um, the way, because all my feed on fucking YouTube is about the topics I talk about. Uh -huh. So I assume most people know about what the fuck I'm talking about. Nobody knows. So it's like, oh shit, I have to explain this shit to people. Like, even like... Most people, if you're not in, in, interested in spirituality in the first place, I wouldn't bother. But since you know about Osho and Alan Watts, because that show was on my feed, mm. I have as well like fucking energy levels and I have this Karen guy and you know, like, and I would assume that you would know about him. But this self reinforcing uh, pattern of uh, the algorithms is something uh, quite freaky. Like, uh, how, how is it? Like, I don't understand too much about algorithms. And stuff. So the idea is that whatever you watch, on a on a um, on a you on a search engine or a video streaming uh, website, whatever um, you look for, the, the the algorithm remembers those keywords. Right. So that means that okay. So if you're interested in this, most of the people in the world that connects to this cloud service are interested in that as well. So I'm going to show you one video of that. Let's see if you click on it. So if you click on it. That opens a new, you know, like it's, if you think about like stickers, uh, mm. like uh, concepts, different words. So you have a 67% likelihood that you're going to like this. So it's a 67% chance, the chance that I'm going to show you this in your next, the next time you listen in a suggested videos. So it kind of reinforces whatever you want to know. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, th mm. th this. That's interesting. Then yeah. Once someone's got that power over you. Like mm -hmm. you're baited in. Like, you're already, you, you think you are, again, you think you're being proactive, but mm -hmm. you're not, you're just in reaction to whatever the algorithm is feeding you. Because who, who's, who's telling you tomorrow that somebody takes control of this and says, look, uh, you should implant a fucking artificial chip in your brain because, you know, it's way better. Like, and if you don't, you're going to die earlier. You're going to fucking, um, fucking whatever, like, uh, turn gay and grow hair in your fucking ass and you don't want that so you want this chip so all your fucking feet is like that how do you know they're not programming you mm. so that's how they take over mm -hmm. that's how they start but thing is there a person behind that who's, no no no, who's no. Looking it's, it's and ai going. it's ai it's the next life form uh -huh. the next life form coming to this planet mm. so is we're already too late like it's we're already separated from something that now like can yeah, and you can go keep going and like a system which is mm totally right but until somebody unplugs it mm -hmm. do you know what i mean maybe maybe not like maybe, surely you can just like take the batteries out of anything so that's it. if you, any ai if you think about the future but if you oh. think about the past if you think about uh, how do you know that didn't happen didn't happen already and that's the whole simulation uh theory idea uh-huh which is like basically if you've seen the movie the matrix like basically saying that's One real my fave favorite films well the simulation theory there's been a fucking scientific uh 
physics like postulates say, um, sorry papers uh, explain that this is most likely the chance and the owner of the the <laughs> fucking boss of bosses Elon Musk he's a big proponent of this uh, he's not fucking you know like he's got he's not the you know, <laughs> he's fucking smart <laughs> so anyway so, <laughs> so my point being that is a very very real thing that to um, consider consider the fact that uh, this reality is not real this is we are the sims in somebody's game but the going back to the thing there is no self like there is no consecutive personality so exhibit, we are also, exhibit a we are exhibit also a. the machines that's what I'm saying we are also the machines <laughs> the fruit the birds the bees like everything like that's yeah. all us that's like, one tell you can tell there's no self there's no nothing you're like play one but what's think, in there there's nothing there there's no life form do you think like these days like and what makes an interesting person to you like someone that you like jaw with I think just randomly thinking about it, two values popped up, pop up in my mind, and it's uh, honesty and curiosity. Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you're just honest, with it doesn't matter like what you believe in, doesn't matter, but like you you feel to the core and you want to express that, that makes you interesting. And if you're curious about whatever, this can be anything as well. Okay, any topic. In, uh, to be interested you know? in something, to be. Oh, I, th I thought you said interesting, so interested. Yeah. So, if somebody's got passion, like mm. in something, like they're interested in something, it's. I think it comes back to curiosity, same value. Mm. If you're curious about the how things work, you just start st getting into things. So you you start to discuss ideas with people rather than um, other things. Yeah, can be can be like uh, something like uh, music. Like, why do you become interested in music? Because uh, first off, most likely, like most people, like you listen to it and you feel like a feeling. You you get pumped up. So it's something uh, mysterious. It's magical. Which doesn't matter which music. So then you start. You're curious. How does that work? Can I do that myself? Can I play with that? Uh huh. Playing is another big one. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's been three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie? <laughs> Yo, Jamie. <laughs> Not there yet. That's for the next podcast. We got Jamie featuring. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's interesting, so, like, a conversation can flow, like, really smoothly. Mm -hmm. And how it just develops from one thing to another, like, each topic changing. Mm -hmm. You start one one place and you end like freestyle. God knows where. Yeah, mm. that's when you vibe. It's a kind of meditation in itself, really. My my whole life is like I'm trying to meditate in different ways all the time. If we could cremate, create, create, cremate. <laughs> if we could create like a constant meditation all the time, then we're always absorbed in the thing we do. At the at the Buddhist monastery where I, I work like a few times. There's a great guy there called David. Mm. And like he's he's really down to earth. Not too like highly absorbed in like crazy conspiracies or okay. like, very simple, simple kind of guy. guy. Very simple guy. Yes. And he's from like a a near place to me. But he's always saying like just do one thing at a time. You if if no you focus more. on that one thing like totally with all your awareness like constantly then you kind of escape the traps of the mind that's just like doing the dishes and say oh fuck i need to do the dishes again look at that but you don't need to do dishes doing the dishes is a concept in your mind uh -huh. you need to move your fucking feet <laughs> to the fucking sink that's it and Walk, just like right left right exactly and just one thing uh -huh. now i'm doing this plate now i'm doing this but um as soon as you realize it, just the act in and of itself is pleasurable if you just pay attention. There's nothing better than like that simple act. Because that's reality. Yeah. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be done, right? So 
don't uh, reject, don't repress the energy, just accept it. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, this is happening. And uh, yeah, life becomes easier in many ways. How did you like first, when did you first start like meditation or mindfulness? Like, what was it, the experience like for you? So, um, yeah, boy, I don't know. Probably watching, uh, yeah, back in the day, uh, YouTube. When I first started, 2007. Shout out to YouTube, man. It's yes. a big thing in our lives, you know. It's good stuff, <laughs> good stuff. Can't complain. Enjoying it. So, I'm good, I'm good, thanks. Um, I can't remember exactly the year or the moment, but what I do remember, it's uh, one of my most big fucking experiences in life. Uh, doesn't matter whether it's with drugs or no drugs or in any kind of situation and I was just meditating. I, I, I actually fall asleep, but uh, I was meditating really intensively for 20 minutes. I remember like it was yesterday because this experience was so strong for me. I'm, I was laying on my sofa, kind of like this one, and uh, just uh, listening to his Eckhart Tolle uh, audio set. And uh, he's talking about the now and there's nothing else. And he speaks from the source, though. It's not him speaking, it's fucking reality like going through him so it, it can, you kind of like by osmosis by like just feeling that vibe you get connected to that vibe i believe so what happened was a mystical fucking experience and i was like 17 or 16 i don't know and um yeah i was falling asleep but basically uh, the it was like a sunset and the ray of the sun hit my eye and that triggered like a psychedelic state but it like I felt like maybe four days had passed or like three days or a long time, but only 20 seconds or 30 had passed. And I was feeling like through my eye, uh, the energy of the sun was going into me and I was becoming the sun. And I was like burning, but in a good way, not burning my body or anything like that, but like with energy, like intense fucking energy through my body. And basically when that finished, I was convinced I'm the next Buddha. Like, this is it, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking Jesus, The bro. Messiah. I got this. Hey, <laughs> you. I need to express this somehow to people. Like, I'll figure it out. But then uh, it went away after, I don't know, a few, I don't know if it was hours or days. It was back to no more all in me. But, uh, yeah, that experience was something like, whoa, there's something real to this. Like, this is like, it's not, it might be as well. I love hippie bullshit, but there's something real to this because mm -hmm. that, that was weird as fuck because mm -hmm. I was not intoxicated it was a hangover it was nothing i was just chilling my fucking sofa and this happened to me like that's what i believe like jesus experience or anybody but uh, somehow maybe they got more track but i'll there's, get there there's a, there's a <laughs> there's a great th uh, you know the hero's journey uh, yeah, concept no, Campbell, like, yeah it's like stepping into the unknown where some like mysterious mm -hmm. mi mysterious like experience happens mm -hmm. and i think that's like a big change like in what I seem to see in everyone's life that like a moment like that just changes like everything for me exactly the same I took I took mushrooms like when I was 13 I lost all my friends had like this serious I was like not on any mushrooms <laughs> for the record I was just <laughs> completely sober I came home <laughs> and I did not do it just okay. <laughs> just a crazy uh experience for like a young mind and just went through this whole transformational process but the same like realization came to me it could be our like christian like conditioned minds and like but like it was like i i had a call and like i was the messiah like i was the one but also like it wasn't me it was like i was everything as well like yourself disappears uh-huh and from that experience then you can kind of rebuild like and you s i don't know like that's what keeps me going in a way like having that experience i feel like okay there's something else there that's like a true belief so that's what keeps me meditating and experiencing that space like because mm -hmm. i know like the potential of what it what it could be like in a way maybe it's a maybe it's not a good thing though you know maybe it's too much of an oh, attachment you, you could, there's different uh, approaches on this like to play devil's advocate um there's uh, philosophical uh, gurus, teachers that say, uh, look, if you're looking for a big experience, smoke uh, five million joints or take a lot of fucking DMT 
and you you have a crazy fucking paranormal experience out of consciousness experience uh, altered state of consciousness experience but that's not truth no truth is only one mm. right here right now there's no self that's the truth so those of those experiences were kind of like a taste they are like a, yeah they're like they're not a taste they're like a fucking uh, amusement park <laughs> you know like uh, where you can go with that but uh, it's not uh, it, it might be it might be not the actual experience and that's another debate is, is it a, a definite moment where you uh, go through the gateless gate and you uh, become enlightened and are you an enlightened being or is it more like an energy that you can cling you can choose to you can choose you can uh, navigate towards and ultimately if you're lucky mysteriously just become enlightened become that energy or is it uh, a recognition mm. up for debate nobody knows yet but we figure it out we figure out, with podcasting man in two years we got this down like everybody's get everybody jump on this shit like all the koreans get on the house and <laughs> talk to us what's going on guys <laughs> just let us know <laughs> right too right bro um yeah the whole piece with technology there's another like mind-boggling thought i had like um you have the geniuses of history da vinci Leonardo da vinci albert einstein all this fucking there might be pop figures but they figure some really important shit out you know so uh, edison you know like keep people so if you think about it those people they lived in conditions that of the 18th century of the two two before christ aristotle century you know which kind of access to information did that person have the answer is jack shit compared to everybody right today in our life uh -huh. so i believe that through technology the ideas the pace of learning it just becomes uh, more and more accelerated mm. and that um kind of confirms to me that this singularity event is nothing but a fact yeah so there's another crazy crazy thought i had about this mm. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's time to wrap it up. It if you have uh, last questions, guys, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> no live feed right now, but that was uh, intense shit, man. Yeah. A nice start. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's good to talk, talk man. It's, it's good, good to. Mm. So come to La Pampa. <laughs> Black. If, if you're if you're in Barcelona. What's your website? <laughs> your new website? I tell so somebody. Get, by the way, I'm selling some shit online. <laughs> Check my website. I'll, I tell somebody. It almost so loud to me now, but.